And the drivers are ready out on the circuit as we get ready to go for a 28-lapper at the Red Bull Ring in Austria. Who will be claiming the chequered flag and those all-important points as we have our first look at the grid. Starting on pole position, it is Mohamed Badina in the Ferrari 458. Porsche represented by Benjamin Hengse from Hungary on the front row of the grid. Daniel Fenton heads row two with Mercedes AMG and Killian Drumont in the Subaru BRZ alongside row three Thomas Laboutele in the BMW M6. And then next up it is Pol Jura in the Mazda RX Vision Gran Turismo concept. Then it's Jose Serrano, seventh on the grid ahead of Renda Roos in the Chevrolet Corvette C7. Nico Romero heads Genesis's charge. He lines up ninth position with Daniel Penko, the Spaniard, alongside him. Next up, it is Mateo Estevez in 11th place. And 12th and last on the grid will be Coque Lopez in the Lexus. One last time out a few weeks ago, just to remind you. Now, as you can see, the weather conditions, far from ideal. It is sopping wet out there. No choice for, for these drivers here, Jimmy, to start on the wet compound of tyre. No, you have to do that, otherwise you'd just be completely gripless for the first couple of laps or so. But uh, Padima out front in that Ferrari, feeling fast, obviously, as he said a bit earlier on. So if you're him, really, ideally, you want to just eyes forward and try and build as big a gap as you can whilst the car is feeling good. Of course, tyre wear on as well here. So easy to burn these wet tyres if it gets into difficult conditions. But I, I think it's going to be a fun race this one, Tom. Yeah, we'll see what happens because, of course, it can dry out. There is that possibility with the dynamic weather. Will someone go onto the intermediate tyres? Will they make a gamble and go straight onto the dry combat tyres? We'll wait and see what is going to happen over the course of this 28-lap race. But round two of the 2024 Gran Turismo World Series is about to begin. We're ready to go racing here in Prague as Mohamed Medina and Ferrari will lead the field across the line. And we are underway then here in the Red Bull Ring as we head up towards the first corner. Bedina, Hengse, then Fenton, Drummond, Laboutelet. Don't expect any rash moves in towards turn one, out of turn one, into turn two, and then the heavy braking zone of turn three is where we should see drivers getting themselves in position for the first overtakes. You saw Fenton there running a little bit wide on the exit of turn one. That's left him under attack already from Killian Drummond in the Subaru as we head up the rise in towards turn three. bedima has got the lead. Second place there for Hengse looks pretty sure, but what about what's happening further behind? Drummond right on the back of Fenton. Don't think he was able to launch a move, but you've got Laboutelet and Jura in position there, side by side. Fifth place for Laboutelet as he drags alongside and then past the master and up through into fifth place. Yvonne Derouche in the background in the Chevrolet going around the outside perhaps of Paul Jura and Mazda who's looking to the inside of Laboutelet. Cars getting very close contact there between Hense and Bedima at the head of the field. Estevez there having an awful time, I think, spinning down at the uh, at T4 there, at the back of the packs are bad to worse for him. But meanwhile, the mid pack is everyone for themselves. Contact again, I think this time between Darouche and Dremont. These guys are fighting for their lives whilst racing each other out there. Horrible positions to drive in these, but this really shows the talent of these drivers and it shows the strengths and weaknesses of the cars too as Dremont just struggles to get in front of their other super defense and hangs on in further for now. You can throw a blanket over these drivers that are so close to one another. Third place back, the Dima, meanwhile, has pulled out a 1.3 second advantage over Hengse on this first lap. Then the cork in the bottle is Daniel Fenton at the moment, the Mercedes driver who we ride up more with, and we're not even at the end of the first lap. Out of the final corner we go then, is anybody going to think about a lunge in towards turn one? You'll be brave if you think about doing that because it could leave you under threat in towards turn three. Drummond, though, decides that the stress is a better part of Valor, looks for a half move up the inside, but eventually ducks back into the wheel tracks of the Mercedes. He's trying to line it up on the exit of turn one and into that braking zone of turn three. Yeah, that AMG is just a roadblock right now. No one can find a way around on board now with Paul Jura in that Mazda. Of course, uh, highlighted by that rotary engine. Look in the mirror there, the bottom right-hand corner, you can just about see that BMW being pushing along. Paul Jura, Labuta there on the outside. They all try and break off line, just about managing to keep out of each other's way. Uh, Darouche there, uh, getting by uh, Drummond. So Darouche up into fourth place. Now Jura is following through as well. That Subaru really struggling on the straights here. Unfortunately, this is not a circuit. You want to have a car that's slow in a straight line. Yes, yeah, left him under attack here from Le Oh, moves under braking there. There's Drummond leaves no room for his countrymen. Le is going to try and rough it around the outside. I don't think he had much choice in the matter, but he's turned it into an opportunity. He's got ahead of Drummond, and he's almost side by side with Jura. Just has to back out of it again on the exit of that corner and duck back into the wheel tracks. But that was very close and aggressive racing. Jura's a little bit wide. That's left the door open for Drummond to go through into sixth place or fifth place, possibly, but no. 
not for now. Drumont just sits there in sixth position, but all the while they're squabbling. Look at what's happening in front. Medina, Exe, all clearing off into the distance. They're nowhere to be seen. It's hard to overstate how difficult this is. Just driving around in these conditions at this speed is impressive in itself. Whilst trying to race each other, this is where these guys earn their reputation. So the boot today now is focusing on him in the BMW P7 in the pack, and there's Drumont as well. A bit slow for the exit is Paul Jura. Drumont's now putting alongside Will. He has to next get by the boot today. going to push his fellow countrymen through there, up into P5 and P6. Go BMW and Subaru on the inside goes Thomas the boot today. No, he thinks better of it for now. Still holding the place with no Paul Jura hanging on on the outside somehow in that Mazda. Has to back out of it finally, but that was great to, uh, great to working together there by Lebutelet and Drummond, but maybe the stewards will have a look at that. It's allowed Serrano an opportunity to go through up into seventh place there, so Jura has just lost out a little bit whilst they were going side by side into that break into the turn three. I tell you what, I wince every time we go into there because it just takes one locked break and these drivers don't run ABS. So one snatch break and you're going straight off to the seat of the crash. I'm waiting for that one guy to just come flying across the inside of the picture there, out of control, <laughs> wiping somebody out. Hopefully it won't happen, but of course it can happen. So. Still here, onto lap three there, Badima and Hense there, really not separated by much. Very, very quick in these wet conditions are the Ferrari and the Hense. Uh, three and a half seconds back is Fenton, so these guys seemingly the ones to beat in the moment. Lap time's in the high 138s for the two leaders. We expect the crossover time, by the way, to go on to intermediate ties. About 137 there and thereabouts. You can see Badima with that big old slide in that Ferrari 458 as he came through the right-hander. But that's the crossover time. Rain is still coming down as it stands for now. So just keep an eye on the weather conditions. If it starts to dry out, when the times get down into the 1 minute 37s, that's when we should see drivers thinking about boxing for inters. Yeah, I'd love to take a look at the weather radar. Of course, a feature in the in Gran Turismo 7 to see sort of what's coming and what's happening there. But wipers still on for now. Rain is still falling for now. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if things get any better. But we're going to have T1 again. But Dima stretching his legs a little bit. The gap now up to 1.2 seconds. But it seems a little bit weak through T1. That's where Hensei comes back at him. There's a replay. Here's what happened here between Jose Serrano and the group so they go down towards T4, heavy on the brakes, contact there, oh and off goes Serrano, he spins, oh what a shame there for Jose Serrano after such a strong showing at the Montreal round. Yeah, a bit of a hand-fisted attempt there for the Spaniard I'm afraid to say as he went into the breaking zone of turn four, the boots lay me right on board with him and Drummond all out of shape there and then contact spins round Drummond, oh Killian what on earth is going on with your 2024 season, he made a mistake in the Nations Cup if you remember back in Montreal and it goes from bad to worse for him he must have walked under a stepladder or I don't know something along the lines of that but, you know it's in a black cat or something today because it's just not working out at all I love seeing a replay of that but I think one the boot today was quite heavily involved in that incident there but we'll, uh, we'll comment on that when we see more for now and there you go the stewards having a look at that uh, we have live stewards here at this event straight into the action straight into the investigation and we'll get back to you as soon as we know more but that does put as you say Kieran Drummond at the back of the back, and Coquille Lopez will be happy with that because he's gained enough place out of it, but uh, not moving forward. Someone who is moving forward is uh, Estevez for Honda, up to P7 right now after starting from the back of the grid. So, great racing so far from Estevez. Can he continue? We have a look at the weather radar in our commentary box, and there's a little bit of a break in the weather we can see coming along the way in a few moments' time. So if that does start to ease off ever so slightly, we'll keep an eye on things and see what happens. There is Nico Romero driving for Genesis. As I mentioned earlier on, Genesis podium for them in the World Finals at the back end of 2023 in Barcelona. Can they repeat that feat over the course of this year? Just to remind you, as we now see the weather radar, you can see there heavy rain at the moment, but it is going to start to break a little bit later on in this one. So if that does happen, or when that does happen, I should say, then we'll see drivers changing their strategy and thinking on the fly. I love that we have that in the game. In, in real life, the weather radar is something you just don't mind looking at, especially if you're in the Olympic but Anyway, here is a replay of what happened between Drummond and the Boutele. So we're coming down to T4 there. A bit of contact on the way in. Is there something? No, he, he loses it on his own. No, he doesn't. He almost does. Yeah, the contact there with the Boutele just spins him around. But you can see all the way in. Really struggling with the rear of that, uh, that Subaru, sorry. So I think that maybe that car just not quite in, uh, the right car to be in these conditions. But uh, still, do, we do well to come back from this, Dremont, but uh, back in the field for now. Unfortunately there for Killian as he sits down at the back of the field in 12th position for now. There is Engsay. Tell you what, he's keeping Bedima honest, actually, isn't he, over the course of this first 
few laps in this, in both of their first races in the Gran Turismo World Series. They're driving like they've been here for a fair amount of time. You can see 4.2 seconds there and thereabouts over some parts of this lap that they've put into Daniel Fenton, who sits in third place. You can see Labusle getting a three second penalty for that collision with Killian Drumont. Well, we wondered the stewards might have a look at it, and they have, and they've decided to hit Labusle with a three second penalty, which is going to drop him down to about 10th place there and thereabouts once he served it. I mean, yeah, it was fair. He spun Drumont and the race pretty much. So, yeah, penalty there, I think, is, is fair in that situation. So, meanwhile, in the mid back, Paul Euro will be the first person to gain from uh, the boot of penalty. You can see that three seconds above the top of his car there. As he comes to the penalty zone, he'll be forced to brake for three seconds. So, you lose a lot more than that in reality. And uh, then, of course, the time getting back up to speed again is massive, especially given around here a lot of um, high speed acceleration zones. But on board with Paul Euro, looking like a little bit flustered, I think, at the moment. Like he's very comfy, uh, that Mazda proving difficult in these conditions so far, almost, almost collects the back of Labuto there and bits up his own penalty, but we've seen a lot of drivers doing that, just sort of being off the corner, trying to avoid too much rotation, trying to get all in one hit and accelerate in one, uh, one straight line, so accelerate with a bit of lock on because that's an easier way of just getting traction that way. Just what Esteban is a little bit closer in that Honda there as well. That Honda's not been particularly fast actually so far this week, especially in these wet conditions. You see Esteban struggling with the traction as he comes out of turn four. I mean, Esteban's is lap time, stop if you look at it, and then he's matching the leader pretty yeah. much at the moment. So he's really quick as Esteban. So keep an eye on him. Well, we did say he'll come back through the field, didn't we? And here, here he comes now uh, in, in that Honda in P7. I'd say at a. Um, the rear engine cars, the mid engine cars, having a bit of a better time at the moment. Front engine cars. Yeah. Oh, a snap of obviously there for Euro as you saw him just coming through that right hand of his Labusle 7 as he moves off of the racing line. Such closing speed uh, they have as Labusle is going to emerge from seventh place, a little bit higher up the order than I thought. Penko and Romero also under investigation for a collision as well. They're in eighth and ninth place, Romero and Penko respectively at the moment. Out of the final turn we go and across the timeline. So it's all pretty quiet on the Western Front as it stands for now, but it's going to bubble up a little bit later. Where are we at in terms of lap times? We're still in the low 138 at the moment, so we're not close enough for a changeover. The rain is still falling down, but at a lighter intensity than it was. Let's have a look and see if we can work out what happened here with Romero and Penko into turn four, downhill on the braking, Penko on the inside, bit of contact there with Romero. I don't think that costs them too much, really. Nah, that's all right. It's racing, that one. It's great. I say that, and the stewards are going to say it isn't that. Well, no, third fraction. There you go. Finally, I've got one right. That's all this time. <laughs> Taking it, it's taken eight years. Long it's been. Oh, Lopez there. Forgetting that it's the pedal on the left that slows you down. Well, you've got a clutch, I guess, but uh, slows you down too. And back down to 12th place. He goes behind Killian Drummond. Coke Lopez is struggling big time in that Lexus. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to try and launch an attack immediately on Killian Drummond and get himself ahead. Down into the braking zone we go. Closes right up on the back of the Subaru. And it's just not working out at all here for Coke Lopez. He doesn't look comfortable. Look at the way he's driving. Look at his driving position as well. He, he looks tense in his shoulders, doesn't he? You can see him fighting the car scrabbling for grip and trying to find performance that just doesn't seem to be there for the Spaniards. Yeah, it's important in wet conditions to sort of let the car move a little bit. If you're trying to put in these really big aggressive inputs, that's when the car has the biggest issue. It looks like he's sliding through this midsection here. So uh, we have to hope uh, for Coke's sake anyway. The weather does line up a little bit. Again, our weather radar suggesting that it's, the rain is still coming down pretty decently in the moment. So we're a long way left in this race lap. Eight of 28 as Bedema comes across to start lap eight. And uh, here is a replay there of Coca Lopez. So this is going to be quite a scary on board with Coca Lopez. They hit the brake pedal. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. They've got to get out of the way. Oh, you can imagine just a feeling there of, uh, am I about to wipe something out? No, okay, but I am now lost. Yeah, that would make you twitch like a rabbit's nose, wouldn't it? Unfortunate there for Coca Lopez and just about managing to avoid contact into turn three. Now Serrano versus Drummond. Drummond starting to come together in this race. Eight lap out of 28 we are on here in the Manufacturers' Cup Grand Final. Euro versus Estevez a bit further up the road. Estevez now finding that pace. He got ahead of Labutle a couple of laps ago. Now his next target is going to be the Spaniard. So out of turn three and into turn four could be the opportunity that the Honda driver is looking for as he makes his recovery through the field following the difficult qualifying. Side by side we run. Estevez is going to be on the outside into the downhill braking zone. There's a bit of hip and shoulder and a bit of contact. That's going to run Estevez a little bit wide, but can he find traction on the exit of the corner to get ahead of Euro? Side by side they go through into the 
the next left-hander. Estevez is going to have track position here if he can just firm it on the inside, but has he got the grip there to get ahead of Jura? No, Jura sweeps around the outside and holds on to fifth place. What an impressive drive so far by Estevez. This guy started in P11 is up to P6 and challenging Paul Jura in P5. I think he's got the pace to get by, but Paul Jura, uh, very experienced uh, in Grand Trismo 7, just putting the car in the right places right now, but the pace isn't there for him. It's just a matter of time, I think. Trumont just losing a position there to Jose Serrano for 10th position as well. On board we ride here with Thomas Laboutele. Pole position for BMW back in Amsterdam. That seemed like ever such a long time ago, no? There's a bit of contact, isn't there, going through that final corner. Estevez now under a bit of pressure. Meanwhile, Laboutele versus Estevez as we come across the timing line to be in lap nine. Laboutele with the inside line, with track position, with the grip under braking. But does he want to get ahead of Estevez or does he want to leave himself open to the opportunity into turn three? Estevez runs to the kerb on the outside. Laboutele is going to try and pick up his slipstream here on the exit of turn one and then run it for a move shortly on the inside into turn three. The Frenchman closes up onto the back of the Argentine then. Estevez defends track position on the inside and just holds on to sixth place for now so nice clean fair racing in the mid pack here as the rain's getting a little bit lighter but we've still got a heavy rain so coming in there from the south and the wind is blowing uh, a north direction so it's bringing that rain cell across so it's not quite done in terms of rain but already there's some of these guys searching for the water it seems and these wet tires uh, they've been on since the start of the race they're going to start to wear some more but if you're Estevez right now you're in a bit of a tricky situation because you're trying to overtake Paul Jura but if you do that you put yourself back into the clutches of the car behind the boot today and we've seen him he's uh, elbows out all the way as uh, the boot today in, in this race so uh, definitely one to watch out for but SFS needs to try and focus and try and put a car between him and that BMW behind so be careful as well you don't want to squabble too much because look who's going to clear off into the distance Paul Yura doesn't need a second invitation to build a bit more of a gap over those two drivers and Estevez there wide on the exit that could leave him under threat from the boot lane maybe not into these last couple of corners but perhaps across the timeline and into turn one again I was going to say speaking of going off into the distance the leaders now are a, a five seconds ahead of the rest as the boot lane dives up the inside of the last corner not usually a place to see an overtake there up into sixth place goes the boot lane so that was a nice move there but these guys have been sort of bash, uh, bashing and uh, crashing into each other a little bit so we'll see if the stewards have anything to say about any of the racing to me it's all fair racing right now great move by Laboutele but now the question is can you make up the time to pull your in front the gap now about 1.8 seconds just about out of the uh, slipstream range it's going to be all power from that BMW which we know has got plenty of as it uh, bears down on the Mazda in front but yeah Medima and Hense first and second uh, 6.5 seconds ahead of Fenton for Mercedes in third, so it's good for Ferrari and Porsche right now. Well, hugely impressive as well for Hense to just stick it onto the coattails of Bedima, not launching any moves, not getting himself into any trouble, just keeping himself there ready to try and pounce. Let's have a look here. Essendon, ah, oh, he just ran a little bit deep, didn't he? And then Laboutele said, thanks very much. There's a tiny bit of contact into the, out of that penultimate corner, into the final turn. Laboutele up the inside and through into sixth position. Didn't need a second invitation there. His next target will be trying to close up onto the back of uh, Paul Jura for fifth position. Meanwhile, back at the front, you've got Bedima and Hengse still close to one another. This has been the story of the race. It is a little bit closer than it was last time around. So I wonder if Hengse wants to just try and lead the race at this point. Maybe. Might be the mistake for Bedima as well, of course. That gap is now down to only a tenth for a second. And that turn, and Hengse makes the mistake, gets onto the city part of the circuit, recovers him well. But that would have been a nerve-wracking moment there for Benjamin Hensei and Team Porsche. The gap back up now to six tenths per second. And much to the delight, I'm sure, of Mohamed Medima in front in that Ferrari. We're seeing the pace. We're seeing the pace come through now for Hensei and Team Porsche. That's going to be a wake-up call, I think, for Mohamed in front. It's be, OK, cool, right. This guy is quick behind me now. I need to focus. I, I, I can't be making silly mistakes and let that gap come down again. I tell you what, I can't remember the last time we saw a driver, though, come into the Gran Turismo World Series and just perform as well as Mohamed Bedina has done, and also for Benjamin Hense as well, actually, uh, for that matter. These two have, have just been parachuted into this season, and it's like they've been here for years. Yeah, they've done amazing so far, but the race is far from over. And uh, to prove that, here are people squabbling for position in the mid for Romero and Benko. Benko looking up the inside of that Genesis, not going to get a good run off the corner there. Here comes Killian Drummond in the Subaru trying to recover after a spin earlier on. But again, just hasn't quite got the legs in any corner exit. Acceleration, so it just goes backwards. It must be so frustrating. But that
that is the manufacturer's cup. Not all cars have the same strength in the same way. This is Nesri, but big dive up the inside. Henko there also having contact with Romero in the Genesis, and there's still contact, nearly spinning out. Uh, Penko is Drummond. They all seem to somehow get out of the corner, but that was a bit of a mess down there. That's the thing is, when these cars are driving on the limit, as they are in these conditions, you could push them around with your little finger, basically. They are just on the ragged edge of adhesion. You can see Penko has now lost out here to Jose Serrano, who's having something of an anonymous race, it must be said, in that Toyota. Let's have a look at the lap times. Where are we at in terms of that, the weather? It's still in the sort of mid 138s Nothing really to write home about. Certainly not change over to intermediates time for the drivers, despite the fact the rain has decreased in intensity so we'll keep an eye on that over the next few laps or so and see how this circuit develops whether the pace does start to pick up there'll be a couple of drivers out there really i think hoping for that penalty in the boot today giving another one second penalty do you reckon that was for that little bump into the last corner because that would have unsettled estevez and uh, basically uh, you refer to it as a bump and run which uh, if you're driving a stock car is great here not so much so um, that may be for that we'll come back to you when we uh, can confirm that entirely but another penalty for Lebu today he's um, costing himself here a good result yeah he's been in the water a little bit over the course of this race hasn't he let's be completely fair we're still not quite at the halfway stage of this first race there's plenty of action left to come you can see Nico Romero there just up ahead of Killian Drummond 8th, ninth, 10th then for Romero, Drummond and Serrano as it stands for now Lay there with that one second penalty that's going to drop him close to the likes of Estevez and Ramirez and they may fall into the distance of that because it's not only the one second that you lose from the penalty it's also the fact that you've got to get yourself back up to the same racing speed as the rest of the drivers you can see he's right on the back though of Paul Jura as we head through this middle sector of the lap Jura doesn't want Labutle to try and get himself involved in the action because that's going to cost him time you can see there cue the Jaws music Estevez, Romero and Drummond all not far away from this Bobby is over there slightly autographs casually but here we go then penalty uh, being applied to Labutle in that BMW right now now, can Estevez make the most of that? It's going to be over speed a lot quicker, right onto the back of that BMW, but not quite close enough to make the move uh, at that point. And I'll tell you what, Estevez will be ruining that. He really wants to get by Labuta. They, he had that pace, but as you said, that since uh, Labuta they got past, he did manage to uh, open up a little bit of a gap. So maybe the charge started to wane a little bit there for Estevez in the Honda. So across the timeline we go, Badina, Ense and Fenton still your top three as it stands for now. No tail racing here though in this mid-pack off this one. Keen to see what is going to happen here. You can see Drummond now on the recovery with Nico Romero just up at the sharp end of the field. You can see them also on the left-hand side of your screen. Drummond up at the top, Romero down at the bottom. Reverse of those in positions on the track at the moment as we go through the left-hand kick. This is turn two, technically, and then this braking zone just after. This is into turn three. And we've seen a few drivers making a bit of a meal of it, it has to be said. You can see Romero there really slow actually on the apex of the corner allows Drummond to close right up onto the back of him interesting strategy there for Drummond taking a higher gear and just nailing it out of the corner hoping for the best maybe better than trying to play with the throttle and having that wheel spin the moment that we've seen so many times from these guys coming out of the slow corners as we come through again now down to T4 and uh, still rain coming down for these guys at the moment so still having to deal with this still having to deal with the conditions there as Padima has actually uh, just about Spread the gap a little bit to Hense up in the lead. You can see there are live audience there enjoying the racing as of now. Manufacturers Cup now, Nations Cup a little bit later on today. So lots of racing for you Gran Turismo fans at home watching. And there is our weather radar. And after I think this one the last cell of heavier rain, I think it looks like we're starting to clear up a little bit. So we will see. Of course, the weather is moving all the time. The weather conditions here in uh, GT7. So lots of... Uh, lots of the possibilities still to come. And speaking of those possibilities, Jimmy, for the likes of the Laboutile Estevez, who are a little bit further down the order, do you think they'll be a little bit more inclined to take that risk? As we see Drummond now getting close onto the back of Romero, not quite going for the move. But yeah, just going back to that point, do you think that they might take a bit of a gamble? They've got less to lose. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the moment, if I was half those guys, the moment I saw contact there, sorry, between Drummond and Romero, nothing seems to come from it there, but uh, just showing that braking performance of that Subaru. You see, you see on the brakes, Drummond is a demon. It doesn't matter. You can't do anything with it when he comes up the corner. 
Um, but to finish my my call there, yeah, if you're one of these guys who may be trying to think, can I improve my race at the moment? I saw my lap time coming down, I'll come in for him just straight away. Maybe even one lap before. Just try and call it for everyone else does. Do a Jensen button. Do you remember what he did in yes. Australia 2010? He came off the intermediate tyres straight onto the slicks, went off on the next corner, and then managed to get enough heat to get those tyres working. That's a problem for later for these drivers to worry about. We are now at the halfway stage, though, of this race. Into turn four we go. Romero still in front of Drumont. As Serrano there in the back, a little bit of a slip of the slide on as well. Now we've been singing the praises of uh, Estevez in this race, but also Ray Derouche up four places from his starting position. Um, the second best of the front engine runners uh, to Fenton, who is, I think, just sort of found his pace now, found his groove, and is actually starting uh, to go back towards uh, Hense in front ever so slowly. It actually looks like the charge of uh, uh, ben Hense in the Porsche is starting to slow down a bit as Dremont goes up the inside of Romero and the S is there. They're now side by side coming up to this last uh, couple of corners here. Uh, Dremont on the inside, Romero on the outside, but Romero able to drive straight back past him again. That must be so frustrating if you're killing Dremont. Ben. What a shame there for Drummond. He's doing nothing wrong at this moment. Look at the exit he's got out of the corner. Pulls alongside Romero and easily gets ahead. But is that going to leave him vulnerable into the next heavy braking zone of turn three? Side by side they go down the start finish rate. Romero's going to go for the long sweeping line on the corner of turn one and try to use the traction on the exit. Gets a bit of a slip and slide on Drummond. Pushed to the sausage curb on the outside. And again, side by side they go. Romero on the inside. Drummond's on the outside. And Romero in the Genesis with greater strength and speed just powers past the Subaru. Nothing Drummond is able to do. Into the braking zone of turn three. Closes up once again. Gets very deep on the brakes. Tries to switch back on the inside. Gets himself ahead. That might leave an opportunity for Serrano to come into play as well. That's what he needs. He needs that. He needs someone else in between him and Romero. Serrano dies up the inside in that Toyota. But Drummond, even still, that amazing exit is still struggling to try and make the gap heavy on the brakes. Now, this is where Drummond's got to make the difference. He's got to be quick in this middle sector. If he can get free, I think we're going to see him pull up to the back of Labu today. He just needs to be on his own, and he's made it. Look at the difference in speed there as Serrano gathers it up from a slide mid-corner. 100 mile an hour plus slide. These things are scary, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, but going for his middle sector, Drummond just disappearing now from Samara Romero as he's finally unleashed. Romero was so wide out of turn four, he was almost off into the car park at that point. He managed to get it back online and gather it all up, but it really could have cost him quite dearly. Indeed, he's now got to redo all of the hard work that he was trying to do on Serrano a few corners ago. In towards the penultimate turn we go. Lap time's now starting to creep into the 137s for the first oh, time as well. Hengse and Fenton in the high 137s. The low 137s are where we're expecting that intermediate tyre crossover point to begin. So across the timeline line we go. Jura and Labusle under investigation. Let's have a look here and see what happened. Jura's late on the race. This is down into turn four or three, isn't it? And, ah, uh, yeah, up the um, inside. That allowed Estevez to go through. I mean, he was there for a long time. He was alongside. I know, I know he came from a long way back, but they were side by side and Labusle still turned in. So I don't know if he got there. I think that's I think that's fair, but it doesn't matter. They're still going at it. Jura up the inside again, trying again, but Labusle will have the better traction on the outside. We think so anyway, but Jura actually managing to uh, outpace, it seems, the BMW is uh, wheel to wheel, side by side, coming down to the next corner. It's a downhill braking zone. Will be on the outside, really, for the grip here. And the boot today, they're just a bit more comfortable than the brakes, able to get the move back past again and up and back into sixth place. I love the way that Euro's got the indicator on, as if he's signalling that he's going to move over to the left hand Excuse side me. of the circuit. Can he launch an attack here on the boot lay into the next corner? No, not quite. Just sits in the wheel tracks of the BMW for the time being. I think. We're getting. Look, is that a dry line? It's drier than it was. It's drier than it was, wasn't it? Look at them. You're going to be using the out, outer parts of the circuit to try and cool those tyres down. They don't want to be on the normal racing line because there's no standing water on that part of the track. It can't cool the tyres down enough. Yeah, it seems that they're really struggling right now. I, I think if I saw Hense, I mean, the times are 37 8, 37 4 from Hense. If I was someone on track right now and I was struggling, that's my right, okay? Coming in, I'm putting those inters on, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna chance it because the weather radar that we have, you, you guys uh, can't see it right now. We have it here in our booth. And we can see that there's a bit more rain coming, but it's really, really starting to dry out enough. And these cars are now starting to move that water off the circuit and create a drying line. So really, as we come into lap 17 of this 28-lap race, it's all going to unfold and start again. Who's going to make that first gamble? Who's going to go to that intermediate compound tyre first? And who's going to reap the benefits of that? 
So, who is going to roll the dice then? Let's see what happens. Surely the end of this lap, some of the drivers that are a bit lower down, they've got to come in, they've got to take a gamble because it's their opportunity to try and use that pace advantage that they may have from switching onto the intermediate tyres. I don't think it was going to be quite as bold as to go onto the dry tyres, but if you look at the weather radar though, here's Jimmy, there's not much rain on the horizon, not much on the forecast. Do you just chance it, stay out on the wet tyres for a little bit longer, then go onto the dry tyres at the first available opportunity and try and miss a pit stop? Because what are you going to lose? What, 10, 12, 14 seconds maybe from a pit stop? Yeah, I think so, but I mean, you have to, surely. I mean, the, the difference in tyre and, and speed between the two tyres is pretty significant, so you really have to think about that. And uh, yeah, again, look at the, uh, the timings. I mean, the worst person to be right now is Mohamed Badima, because you're out front, you're the one basically giving the info to everybody else. And this is where it gets really difficult. But if I was Koke Lopez, I'd be like, you know what? I'm coming in, I'm coming in right now. Why the hell not? I'm 26 seconds off the lead, make a gamble. Yeah, well, he's got nothing to lose, hasn't he, Koke Lopez? And I'll tell you what, the gap for the race leaders come down who is that? a little bit. Yeah, let's see who has come into the pit lane at the end of this lap. We look at the boost lane. Yeah, Mateo Estevez in the Honda has come in for another set of tyres. Now, which way is he going to blink? Is he going to go on to intermediate tyres? Surely that's going to be where the sensible money is for the Honda driver. Or does he just gamble and go straight for the dry tyres? I don't think he'll be able to get the heat into them. Let's see which way the Honda tyre goes. Yep, it is onto the intermediate tyres then. So, nicely done for Mateo Estevez in the Honda. Exits out of pit lane. <laughs> and he is the first driver in the now drying conditions with nine and a half laps remaining to change over onto the intermediate tyres. So now everyone is going to be watching Matteo Estevez and what his pace is like. You can see a little bit, of course, that time and, and like when you're driving around here uh, in these live events. So uh, if Estevez now is starting to set purple lap times, purple sector times, you're thinking, right, OK, now is the time to come in. Now is the time to switch to that inter uh, compound of tyre. Someone else who might consider that. These guys do want the Serrano a bit further down the field than they would usually like to be but we know these cars are strong in the dry conditions and the track is starting to go that way more importantly Padima Hense who are coming round to the last sector now will they see the SFS is coming will they go for that gamble and go into that intermediate compound of tyres the times now we're starting to almost see 36s from the front and we think the crossover is about a mid 37 so maybe it's time who knows let's see uh, they're coming around the last corner now Padima comes in Three tenths of a second separate those driving, but even does come in then off of the wet tyres. He's going to surely go onto the intermediates. That releases Hengse into the lead. So Badima is the first driver to blink. He was the first driver to get there, of course, and he'll be feeling those conditions out. You can see the rain is still coming down, albeit in a lighter intensity. Surely it's got to be the intermediate tyre. And it is for Mohamed Badima then. So the Ferrari onto the intermediate tyres. He's the second driver to blink and go on to that quicker compound at this stage in the race. Guys have fanned themselves. He's feeling the pressure for years. I mean, you say first driver to blink, the first driver at the head of the pack to go to those intermediates. He comes out right behind Ray and Darouche. So this is going to be interesting for him. Will he have the pace to be able to drive by Darouche or will he be held up here? So you want to try and put yourself into a gap when you make a strategy call like this. But right now, he's behind Darouche. So coming out of this... Uh, T3 here, this is the traction zone. Let's see the difference between the Ferrari and that Corvette, that Chevy Corvette in front. Looks like our oh, is much faster on exit there, gaining a tenth of a second just on the exit. Um, I think this is the right call. And you see Estevez and Penko coming in now also for that intermediate compound attire. I think we'll see them all coming now, Tom. Yeah, this is the time when the stakes can be made, though. Cold tyres from the He's got to spend a few corners getting them up to temperature, but he's doing a really good job. You can see a bit of a, an eyebrow switch there as we look at him in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Randa Rouge in front, and surely the Rouge is going to come into the pit lane at the end of this lap. Surely the, the rest of the field have to. They, they can't sit out there on these wet tyres. They've got to change over to the Inters. Is anybody going to take a gamble, though? stay on the wets, maybe go for the dries a little bit later on when the track gets even faster. It's a gamble, it could pay off. It could, because you're then saving an entire pit stop. Pit stop's worth a lot of time around here, so um, we'll see. Watching the demon now, not quite making the inroads on Darush as you think he would right now, so the um, tyre, wet tyre is still okay for now, but now here it is. These uh, sort of low speed corners, these medium speed corners, you can see Mohammed there thinking, oh, mate, have I made the right choice? Look at the fastest sector times though coming in on the timing screen, Jimmy. You look at the likes of Mateo Esso, yeah, he was fastest right. overall in that first sector, by a se second sector rather, by a second over the comparative wet runners in front of him. So he's now starting to get heat into the tyres, starting to find the pace, and surely it's going to be a matter of when and not if Padima finds his way through on the wet shot de Rouge. I mean, you can see the circuit now visibly starting to have drier patches and wetter patches. Obviously, de Rouge has taken the wet part, and Padima trying to stay on the drier part and really use that intermediate compound of tyre. Now, of course, the downside to that is you're going to just absolutely lunch 
that intermediate tyre on the drier compound circuit. But that's, that's, that's what it's there for. It's there to be that crossover period. And again, on the traction zone, gained nearly half a second on Darush in front. And now, will Darush fight this or not? Because if, if he's staying out, that says to me he's going to go right on, immediately onto the six. So Badima, as he goes, oh, easy pass there for Badima. Not quite, though. The strength and the Corvette there. Big speed. Go on, sorry, look, Tom. Look at the sunshine, though, in the distance. That's going to drive the track out even more because we're now starting to see the weather changing even more. Badima right on the back here of Darush as we come through this left hander. He's got more traction. He's got more grip. He's got the opportunity on the inside. Darush tries to defend the position as he's rightful to do so. Can Badima firm it around the outside? It's risky going through there, but Badima has got trapped position, he's got third place for the time being, he's going to have more grip under braking into the penultimate corner, and the former race leader, Mohamed Medina, on the intermediate tyres, is now up into third place. But now, he needs to catch Hense and Fenton, who have both chosen not to pit here. So, as you say, Tom, they might just be roughing it out on that wet tyre and hoping for the best. We'll look at, take a look at lap times, I mean, this is not really going to be a representative, I think, of... Uh, the pace for Badima at the moment still does a 34-7 whilst passing. Uh, sorry, Tom. Yeah, you just say Yura and Romero also into the pit lane then. Where what? are they going to go, though? That's the question. They're going to go wets on to winters. They are. Yeah. I wondered if someone might just take a bit of a gamble and just go onto the dry tyres, but they're playing it safe at this stage. He does. Oh, Romero. Yeah, Romero goes soft. This could be a massive decision here. Nico Romero for Team Genesis decides to play the player hand. He's going for those soft tyres. So let's see how he does. We'll watch his sector times eagerly and see how he gets on. But here he is out the pit lane now. Can he get up to speed or is it going to be just a mess? So he's going to be going straight over to that drying line. We'll see how he does because the, the guys who've taken the intermediate tyres already will have to stop again and go to those softs. This could be everything for Romero and Genesis. This is bold for Romero and for Genesis, <laughs> but they've got nothing to lose. They weren't really featuring in the podium battle, and this could be an absolute masterstroke if the rain isn't going to come down. You can see the sunshine now bathing this circuit and the dry line getting even more prominent. And of course, the likes of Bedina, he might have to firm it out on the intermediate tyres and move over to the wet parts of the track. So it could go from being an advantage for a few laps into a disadvantage depending on what Romero does but I tell you what he is a brave man to go out there take a gamble quite like this we've got to keep a very close eye on the lap times you can see though now a very prominent difference between the wets and the intermediates Fenton and Bedina seven tenths of a second quicker for the Ferrari compared to the Mercedes in second and third I don't think it's enough though Tom I don't think it's enough at this stage Romero so let's look at his second sector is comparable to those on the wet tyres, a little bit faster actually. The intermediate tyre, definitely the fastest tyre right now, but will it be Darush as well, opting to come in for that soft, the Boutle and Serrano and Coca Lopez then, are they all gonna go for that soft compound attire? Did Mohamed Badima blink a little bit too early? Well, we'll see what happens here as Darouche crawls his way out of the pit lane. He's going to have to be very careful off the racing line to not spin up those slick tyres and try and get some heat into them. Moves over to the drying line. That's going to leave him under attack here from Jura. So Darouche now behind the intermediate shot Estevez. Now, this will be a real test because Darouche has had good pace. He's on the soft tyre. The two drivers sandwiching him at the moment, both on the intermediates. You'll expect Jura to be quicker. Look at that more grip he's got under braking, especially into turn three. And out of this corner as Darouche tries to get those softs up to some operating temperature. Yura here is on the inside. Darouche, I'm sure, is going to be a little bit defenceless at this stage. He's not taking it lying down into the braking zone of turn four. Has Yura got more grip under braking? He certainly has. He dives to the inside in the Mazda. Darouche has got no answer for him at the moment, but it's, uh, there's still a few laps left. There's still five and a half laps for this to come the way of Darouche and Le Boutle and the likes of Romero, Serrano and Lopez, all of whom have gone onto the dry tyres. Isn't, isn't this crazy? We have every compound tyre currently on the car. Hense, finally, uh, opting to pit in. He'll go surely to the soft tyre. There's no other option at this point for him. The track is still dry, nothing on the, the weather radar coming in. Fenton opting to stay out again. This is going to promote Bedima back up into, yet yeah, soft there for Hense. So, oh, this is going to be a crazy finish. We're going to have to check the gaps once we get a, uh, uh, them go through the, the sectors. But right now, Bedima, 1.7 off the lead. Hense back out on that soft compound tyre. Where does he come out? Kylian Dumont, who's not pitted, is still in P4 at the moment, just behind this battle and the gap is about 10 seconds between Fenton the leading car and Hensei who's just come out the pit on the softs so 
Five laps left of this race. This is going to be the longest five laps of Padima's life. He has got to drive so, so carefully to keep those intermediate tyres in the right operating window, depending on if those soft tyres that a lot of other drivers are on, the likes of Hengsei, etc., are, are going to be able to try and close up. Clive, right, check the timings. Romero is the fastest man on the circuit right now on those soft tyres. The soft tyre is a tyre to be on. Look at Darouche on the inside of Jura then. Soft tyre there for Darouche. He's got some heat into it after just one lap. He now deposes the Mazda down into seventh place. And his next target is going to be Mateo Estevez. He's going to drive by him like he's standing still. But importantly, is there enough time? Is there enough time left? There's about six laps left here. You need at least a second of that plus the overtake for Hense. He's the one we're watching right now uh, in P3 to try and catch Fenton and Badima. So right now, Estevez, Darouche and Jura, all of them, uh, well, Darouche on the soft tyre, Estevez and Jura on the intermediate tyre. For this middle sector, you can see Darouche just hasn't quite got the speed. Jura can go around the outside, but as soon as he hooks into that dry tarmac, that Chevrolet just absolutely takes off Fenton coming in. Too late for Fenton. He's really going to lose that here, I think. Yeah, I think you could be right. Could possibly cost him a podium here as we look at this battle. Three drivers all squabbling for position on three different compounds of tyre as well. Darouche then on the soft. Jura and Estevez on the intermediate tyres. Through the final corner we go. Darouche with more traction, more speed underneath him. He's going to outdrag Jura for the time being as we come down the start finish straight though. Jura moves onto the wet part of the circle to try and cool those intermediate tyres down. Estevez also following suit as well. Keep an eye out for Laboutele who's on the soft tyres in the BMW. He could be a real cork in the bottom at the moment and he could power past the likes of Estevez and Jura. So at the front we've got a nine and a half second gap here. Bediva, he can't pin again. He can't afford to. He's not got the time in his pocket on those intermediate tyres. He's got to run this to the end of the race as we go side by side here between Estevez and Laboutele for seventh place and Laboutele on the soft tyres more grip under braking and seventh place is his for the taking into turn three. 33-7, last lap for Padima, our leader. The Boutelet on the soft tyres in P7 does a 31.4, that's two seconds a lap faster. There is enough time for Hensley to catch Padima here with five and a half laps there. Four and a half laps, sorry, left on this race. Uh, M Prime, the grand final on board with Le Boutelet on that soft tyre, trying to find his way around Paul Jura. Should be easily said and done. It goes round the outside, up he goes. Hensley's just gone seven tenths of a second faster in the middle sector than Bedima on this one lap alone. That is an absolute meteoric amount of time for Hengse. Jimmy's rubbing his hands together with glee because this is setting up an, uh, set up an absolute treat into the final stage of this one, but no tail action for fourth place. Could possibly be the final place on the podium because look at Drummond, he's on the wet tyres. They are not the compound to be on at the moment and he is going to be a sitting duck compared to the soft shot Fenton, Laboutelet and Darouche behind him. And Drummond is surely going to be losing out in a space of a few hundred metres as we head in towards the braking zone of turn one. This is amazing racing, third, fourth and fifth, all vying for position, going into T1 onto lap 25. Fenton up the inside, maybe if Drummond, no, he's there, the only guy out there right now on the wet tyre, trying to make it work, trying something different, but he's not got the traction. Here comes the Boutelet, here comes Fenton, they're side by side. Coming up now towards T2 and T3, the Boutelet almost pushing Drummond, we've seen that road, De Rouge, a fifth place, and look at the speed of the Corvair, to the inside goes De Rouge, oh! oh, it's gone down, Fenton's gone. Fenton's gone, he's straight off onto the outside of the track. Drummond with no, nothing going as well, no grip for him on the wet shot Subaru, and unfortunately, for Daniel Fenton, he's put in a brilliant race in his debut event and it all comes to nothing sadly for him. Meanwhile, at the sharp end, the gap up to nearly 10 seconds as we see Jura versus Drew Watt side by side. This will be easy for Jura because he'll have more grip under braking on the intermediate tyres. But Hengse made a mistake on that last lap. He was quickest overall in the second sector, but the third sector, he must have made an error because he was about a second slower than Bedima last time around. And that could be the catalyst which may cost him a chance of victory. But did you see Ryan Derouche there, Tom? He went from, I think, sixth or seventh to third in one corner. Amazing run there. However, the stewards, not so happy about that. I wouldn't be either if I was Fenton. He's a replay. Look at Derouche. He's in sixth place right now. Super close. Makes the most. Goes around the outside of the boot. Goes around the inside of Fenton. Breaks into the contact. Hits. Oh, this is all messy. I think. You know what I think happened? I think that there was a bit of contact. I think Fenton breaks on the on the wet part, on the six. Well, you can argue that Derouche hit the back of Drummond. Maybe that upset the balance of 
No thanks, Ace Car. Either way, wow, well, the stewards have got more angles. Let's have another look at it later on and see if we can pick the bones out of it. Meanwhile, Darouche versus Labuso, then two soft combat of tyres. This is the final battle for the final podium place, and of course, all important World Series points over the course of this season as well. So this doesn't just mean a matter of pride, it means a matter of their championship position. Meanwhile, at the sharp end, I think Medina is going to have enough left in his pocket as it stands for now. Eight seconds, the gap he has got over Hengse. If Hengse hadn't made that mistake a couple of laps ago, he could be in with a bit more of a shout. But at the time being, I don't know. We'll see, Tom. Fastest lap so far from Pecco Lopez is a 30.5. Fastest lap from Medina is a 33.5. That's three seconds of that faster. There is still time for Hensei to get there. They're boots there. Be inside to Rouge makes the mistake. Gets onto the wet part of the circuit. The Snicks cannot deal with the water. And he slides out there. And Labutale, after hitting pretty much everyone in this race so far, up to P3. Will he stay there? Stewart's inquiry ongoing at the moment. But Hensei, that is the battle we need to keep an eye on. It's 6.6 seconds the last lap there there is Padima right now you can't see Hensei so right now it's in good okay for this run my laps he's got uh, two laps at the line left here putting over onto that wet part of the circuit to try and cool down his interest. look at the time top 34.2 he's losing time most tires are starting to fall apart what is Hensei's time 31.7 three seconds faster it's still on it's game on you're absolutely right the track is getting faster and faster over the course of this one Medina 5.6 seconds the advantage he has over Hengse but he's just going to be hemorrhaging time you can see him there moving over trying to keep those inters cool but is it all going to be in vain look at that in the background you can see Hengse in the Porsche could it be game on and now Badima's struggling to slow the car down into turn three this is the pressure really getting to Mohamed Badima Hengse there meanwhile he's on the opportune compound of tyre at the right moment in this race but he has got five and a half seconds of a gap to close up onto the back within a lap and a half so we need to see a gap of three seconds or less realistically for Hensei to have a go on the last lap but that's three seconds plus the overtake which to be fair should be fairly easy but there's only one dry line there if you can defend that dry line there's no way these soft tires can deal with that water the moment they go offline as we saw with Ryan Darouche just in the last lap the car you're just a passenger but look how much faster the progression there from being a second lap slower on lap 24 to being three seconds lap faster on lap 26 and Bedima now comes to the last sector it is going to be so close to the line one locked break one snatched wheel one run off of the normal racing line it could be curtains then for Benjamin Hengste no further action between the Rouge Trumont and Daniel Fenton a racing incident then it is deemed for that meanwhile the battle for the race lead is well and truly on as we begin the final lap Mohamed Bedima for Ferrari on the intermediate tyres Benjamin Hengste on the soft compound of tyre we come across the timing line three seconds is the gap between these top two it is winner takes all stakes and six points in the World Series up for grabs the way it's going to be right now is Hengste is going to catch Bedima right at the end of the line Last lap, Bedima will know that Hense is coming enough. One eye in the mirror, but he needs to focus forward if he wants to take this for Ferrari. This will be by far Ferrari's best result here in the Manufacturers' Cup if he can just hang on for half a lap more. But look, the gap now down to two seconds. Crucially, though, for Hense and for Bedima, Hense is out of slipstream range at this point. He's not close enough to launch an attack at the moment. He'll close up right in this middle section. This is going to be a real Achilles heel for the intermediate shot Ferrari through these medium speed left-handers here. Yeah, this is where Ferrari is going to struggle the most. This is where Hensei can close the gap. 1.5 seconds now is the gap between Ferrari and Porsche. He will be victorious here in Prague. Only a few more corners left. Can Bedima hang on? Le Boussole and Darouche under investigation. Darouche is down to ninth place. There's clearly something's gone on between those two drivers. Bedima driving. He's got a few corners remaining, but the gap is now under a second and Hensei there can sniff the opportunity of victory. It's within his Grass, Bedima moves over off the racing line. There's two corners now remaining. It's Ferrari versus Porsche. It's Bedima versus Hengse. It's winner takes all stakes. Bedima goes to defend the final corner. Hengse goes for the move on the outside. It's a drag to the line in the Manufacturers' Cup. Is it Bedima and Ferrari? Is it Hengse and Porsche? Bedima has done it! Fantastic! Mohamed Bedima wins for Ferrari in Prague in the Manufacturers' Cup Grand Final for Benjamin Hengse and Thomas Le Boussole. I tell you what, a longer final lap, any other circuit, and Bedima would have lost the racing lead. 0.0092 of a second separating Ferrari and Porsche at the end. 
What a drive from Bahama Patima. What, what a debut there. Taking Ferrari to the top step of the podium for the first time ever in the Manufacturers' Cup. But what a drive also from Benjamin Hense. Again, first time here at a World Series event performing at that level, almost taking the win for Porsche. But more importantly, another second place for Team Porsche. Looking good for those guys in the standings. We'll get those to you very shortly. But uh, can't take anything away from Mohamed Badima. Imagine that feeling, knowing you're on the wrong tyre, seeing that Porsche coming up behind quickly. And you can see the audience there. They enjoyed that almost as much as we did. Let's go catch up then with our race winner, Mohamed Badima. His first ever event. He's down on the stage talking to Jill.